five books that I really, really enjoyed. So don't be fooled by the cute and colorful cover. I found that this was really fresh. I had never read anything like it before. This is part of the reason why I enjoyed it so much. The language was absolutely beautiful. I really wanted to know the end. I was wondering what the hype was about and now I know. You guys know I really enjoy reading in general, but also in my target languages. And from the start, one of my goals with learning Japanese was to be able to read in Japanese. So since I started learning Japanese in 2019, I was very intentional with incorporating reading practice into my study routine. Fast forward to now, let's just say I have read dozens of books. And my current goal is to reach the milestone of 100 books read in Japanese. And I think that until recently, I was mostly reading to practice my Japanese. So anything was okay. I read all genres, all styles, all levels from many different authors to get accustomed to as many styles and lexicon as possible. But now that my level in Japanese is comfortable, I am definitely able to tell whether I like what I read or not. I am also able to pick up on the author's style, the double meanings, the innuendos, the words and expressions they seem to like and use often, so that I can finally form an opinion on what I read. I can compare and contrast with other things I've read. And now I have favorites, and I want to share my favorite books in Japanese with you guys to hopefully inspire you to read more in general and especially inspire you to read in your target language just like I did with Japanese So before sitting the N1 this year I actually read a whole lot of books in Japanese and my goal for this year was actually to read 100 books in Japanese I'm almost there Right now, as I film this video today, I am at almost 90 books read in Japanese, so I'm almost there. Before sitting the exam, my goal with reading was not only to prepare myself for the reading section of the exam, but also to relax. I read quite a big amount of books during the first part of 2023. And at the time, I found five books that I really, really enjoyed. I consider them as little gems and I really wanted to share these with you guys. I actually sell them back to Book Off. So Book Off is a store in Japan, a store for used goods and mostly they sell books. You can purchase books there for usually half their price and you can also resell books there. So that's really interesting. The books I have read and don't want to keep, I will necessarily resell them. A small disclaimer before we start, all of these books are in Japanese, but most of them were actually not written originally in Japanese. They were not from Japanese authors. You will see as I explain them one by one. All right, let's get started. First book on the list, I don't have a copy of anymore. I sold it back to Book Off and it was Subete no Shunkan ga Kimi Datta. It was you at every moment by Hate Wang. And sorry for my pronunciation, this is a Korean author and I don't really know how to pronounce. And so this is a translation from Korean language. I read it at the end of January this year and this was an instant favorite of mine to be honest this book and the book after that they are mostly collections of poetry and this was the first time i read that in japanese so granted this was written originally in korean and then translated to japanese but i found that the japanese translation honestly was perfect i'm not able to compare with the original version but still because I found that the Japanese translation was conveying so many emotions and was so beautifully written, I think this is a fair translation. So that's 
Mostly why I enjoyed this book, honestly. The language was absolutely beautiful. The theme of the collection was about love. You know, all the different stages of love. It starts with a chapter on the act of falling in love and love at first sight. And for example, the next chapter would be the honeymoon phase. Then the love in the details, you know, once a couple has been living together for a while and they find joy about love in the details, in, in little things of uh, you know daily life and then the last one was the breakup phase even the categorization of the chapters was interesting i found that this was really fresh I had never read anything like it before i don't know whether this is describing a real experience that the author had but honestly it felt like it and if it wasn't then i think the author is really really talented in terms of language so i found this was extremely easy to read now the kanji used again this is translation from korean but in comparison with the other translations i've read uh, from korean books korean books are quite popular at the moment so i'm reading quite a lot uh, in japanese and so compared with the other translated books i've read so far this was by far the easiest one uh, the kanji used were not difficult at all. Uh, most of them were actually written in hiragana or katakana. And this was also to convey, you know, a soft feeling. Because this book was about love, I think that was the whole point. So it was translated to Japanese using mostly hiragana and not a lot of kanji. So I think all in all, it's quite easy to read then. A lot of people have talked about it and everyone said it was amazing. So I was wondering what the hype was about and now I know, now I understand. And I hope that with me explaining it to you today, you will also take an interest in this book and you will also read it. So in fact, I enjoyed this first book so much that I actually purchased the next one as well. So this one is Subete no Shunkan ga Ai Datta. It was love at every moment. I'm very excited to read this one too because I'm pretty sure I will love it just like the first one. All right, the next one. Plus 1 centi, tata 1 centi no saga, anata no sekai yo garari to kaeru. Plus 1 centimeter, just a 1 centimeter difference can completely change your world by Kim Unju. So Kim Unju was the author of the texts in this book and Yan Hyonjong uh, was the illustrator. I don't have a copy of this book anymore, just like the first one, I sold it back to Book Off. So I read this at the beginning of January this year. It was a bit less deep than Subete no Shunkan ga Kimi Datta. So this was not a collection of poetry like the first one, this was more a collection of essays, also translated from Korean. Also everywhere in bookstores and on Instagram and I really wanted to see for myself what it was all about. Even now after having read it, it I still find it hard to explain what the book is about. The red thread of the book is basically all the little things in life, small enough to go unnoticed and yet important enough that if we change them, if we tweak them, a lot can change. What we say or we don't say to others, for example. Objects that, if we get them, can change our lives. How to change our perspective on things. It has basically one page of text, one page of illustration kind of pattern on every double page. Quite easy to read as a result. And at the same time, because it was including a lot of idioms and e expressions, I still learned actually a lot of words. Language-wise, it was not difficult and I read it fast. But at the same time, I still needed to focus quite a bit to get everything, basically. The book itself was also all about the details and the language also was all about the details. The author and the illustrator, so basically they worked hand in hand. It was very clear from how the book was made. They were very careful to craft this book in a playful way. So you had to read carefully what was written and then look at the illustrations and then try to grasp double meaning of what they were saying. This in itself felt like a game, sort of. This book is actually part of a collection. 
I believe this one, the one I read, was the first one. And there are multiple other books in the same collection. I'll probably read the next ones. The next book is Suro no Mori no Seikatsu o Manga de Yomu Life in the Forest at Walden by Thoreau in manga form by Henry David Thoreau and John Porce Porcelino. This is a translated book and as you can see I do have the copy of it still because I want to reference it again in the future. I read this between February and March. To be honest I wasn't expecting this at all. I thought this would be more manga and less deep writing but it was a lot of deep writing and even the manga was quite deep in meaning so I had to take my time with this book and I think this is part of the reason why I enjoyed it so much because I had to take my time with it. So don't be fooled by the cute and colorful cover. Actually, this book is about philosophy. If you don't know Henry David Thoreau, an American philosopher, he's quite famous because he had very different ideas than every other philosophers at the time and even now. He is still standing out as a one-of-a-kind philosopher. He was living by himself in the woods at some point in the United States and he wrote about it in a book called Walden or Life in the Woods and so basically this book here is a manga version of what he tells in his book. It has two parts. The first part is manga indeed. The second part is a collection of his main thoughts as told in this book and also another one, Civil Disobedience, another one of his books. I already knew Thoreau before getting this book, so I knew that this was about philosophy. I just didn't know that this was not that simplified. I thought it would be more simplified than this. I thought that all of it would be manga, and I thought that the language itself would be simplified. It wasn't at all. Basically, Thoreau loved nature, so he wrote a lot about nature and he reflected a lot on life, society, society pressure. Probably if you don't know about his works yet, I would advise you to read that first in your language of choice and then maybe enjoy this one. I think it's more like his ideas were put into pictures. Again, it's quite difficult to explain this one. But I think you get the hang of it. So it was definitely harder to read this. I still challenge myself to read it. I was preparing for the N1 at the time, uh, but this is why I keep this book because I want to read it again in the future once my level is even higher. It's not only about the language, it's also about the things he discusses. It's so deep in meaning, you do need to digest everything. The challenge was definitely worth it. I really recommend it. The next book is Ki est ta mama tomo? The mom friend that disappeared by Hiroko Nohara. I read this one in one sitting on April 1st. This one is a Japanese comic essay and it is of a completely different tone than the ones I had read before. It's a thriller actually. So the story goes like this. It's set in a Japan neighborhood, quite normal, very quiet, and children from the same kindergarten are playing while their moms are having a conversation. So this is only the first chapter that I'm telling you about. Suddenly we learn that actually one of the moms, so of one of the children, has disappeared and she's not come to pick up her boy at the kindergarten that day and also for a few days before that. And so no other mom knows where she is, so they start talking to each other, they start talking about it. And so basically in this context, we discovered that she disappeared. She completely disappeared, not only from, you know, the kindergarten, the neighborhood, she, she disappeared from her home as well. And so she left her kid behind her and her husband, and nobody knows why. The person who comes to get the child at the kindergarten every day is the mother-in-law. She doesn't want to talk about it, so basically the other moms really don't know what's going on. So creates a wave of worry and anger in the whole community. Everybody is, 
you know, imagining their own stuff, imagining what happened. Some people think that she's dead. Some people think that she committed suicide or that she was killed by her husband or that she was beaten by her husband. Some people think that she got a boyfriend. The whole story develops through the viewpoint of all the mom friends, the other kids' moms. They were all friends. They formed a group. And so we, we followed the story from their viewpoint. So it taught me a bit about Japanese women's psychology. It taught me about daily lives of other people. It was quite real in format. Like this was quite riveting as well. I really wanted to know what happened to the mom. And this is also why I read it in one sitting, to be honest. I really wanted to know the end. The storytelling was amazing. And even though the subject was a bit dark, I still recommend it to you guys. Language-wise, it was particularly easy to read since most of it was written in spoken Japanese and relating conversations, you know, between the moms, between themselves and with their partners, talking about this mom that disappeared. Really, it's, it's really good if you want to get a real sense of how natives interact with each other and in different settings, you know, and also how young children express themselves because in some scenes, the children also appear. So they, they talk as well and they're quite young. They're like three, four years old. So really interesting in that area too. It was the first comic essay I read that was like this. So it left a good impression on me and lasting one as well. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. All right, finally the last one, guys. Chishiki zero demo tanoshiku yomeru shinrigaku, the zero knowledge psychology book. I also have a copy of this book still, and I will keep this one for future reference because it was absolutely amazing. It taught me about psychology concepts and themes in Japanese, which is exactly what I was looking for. This is an entry level book about psychology. It is divided in three chapters. First, it tells you about the main concepts of psychology. Then it explains terminology used in psychology. And then it tells you about techniques that have an effect on our own psychology and other psychology. Very useful reference book. This was quite superficial. It wasn't going very deep into, you know, psychology. This is really entry level. So basically per double page, you have the introduction of one concept, one theory, one term. This was quite easy to read then because even though it was talking about the difficult stuff, difficult concept, it was only for a short while. Pages were not that long. I read this one in March. It took me a few weeks to complete because language was quite hard and quite scientific. But it was exactly what I was looking for because at the time I was still preparing for N1, right? So I did need practice on reading scientific terminology. I didn't learn many new things from this book. I mostly knew about the concepts, terminology and techniques that they presented in this book. I wanted to know about all of this in Japanese. So it instantly became a favorite of mine, to be honest. And I then purchased two more books about psychology after this one. All right, that's it for this video. If you guys are interested in knowing more about these books, you can read my full review on each of them on my Instagram page right here. You'll find the books I talked about below if you're interested to get them for yourself. I left all the Amazon Japan links and otherwise I will see you next week in a new video. Matane!